I greet you in the name of the risen Christ. I am Reverend Alexis Johnson, your pastor here at Broadway United Methodist Church, and I welcome you to worship whether you are joining us here in person or joining us online. We are so grateful to be able to worship Jesus Christ with you this morning. I have a couple of announcements as we get started. First of all, technically welcome to the last Sunday of the Christian year. Uh, the way Christians celebrate today is the last Sunday of the Christian year. We celebrate Christ the King Sunday, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And next week, if you can believe it, is the first Sunday of Advent, which we consider the first Sunday of our new liturgical year. So we are heading very quickly into the Christmas season, and we are grateful to be able to worship with you as we gather this day. Today we have our worship services, and then at 11.30, the staff will be gathering uh, to meet. This is our once a month meeting that we have. And then tonight at six o'clock is Student Life Breakthrough. On Monday, Phillips Cupboard is open from 12 to two. And this is a correction from last time. I actually have Harmony Court worship at three o'clock this Monday, coming up tomorrow. And at 7.30, we'll have our Bible at Barley's study. Just an FYI, because of the holiday, if you have anything you want in the newsletter, the deadline, the hard cutoff, the uh, she's putting it together and we accept no more things is 9 a.m. on Tuesday. That's a little earlier than we usually have. Uh, and so we just encourage you to get your stuff to Teresa as soon as possible. On Wednesday night, there are no... Uh, small groups happening here and no rehearsals as we all get ready for Thanksgiving. And then uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the office will be closed for the holiday. So we encourage our, our folks to go celebrate. But on Friday, Phillips Cupboard will be open from 12 to 2. And then, of course, like I said, on Sunday, it's the first Sunday of Advent. We'll have traditional worship, contemporary worship, coffee and donuts, and student life will be back together at 6 o'clock. You may have noticed we're still doing our drive-up cookie walk for the United Women of Faith. I ordered my cookies online. It was really easy, and, and they told me when I ordered I could pay online the day that I picked them up, or I could pay by check the day that I picked them up. So even if you order online, you still have an option to pay by check or cash. I'm sure they won't say no to cash. Um, but you have the option to pay different ways or you can order from Diane Johnson in the lobby in between services or you can fill out a little form to order. This money goes to support their mission and ministry that they do on behalf of women, children, and youth here in Council Bluffs and around the world throughout the year. Plus, someone else bakes your cookies if you order for them and who doesn't like just a little bit of a reprieve? We want to encourage you to go check out and to share a website for us, christmasincouncilbluffs.com. Uh, this christmasincouncilbluffs.com will give you all the information about our Christmas Eve worship services. We are having two worship services this year, a 4 p.m. and a 6 p.m. And then just to let you know, on Christmas Day... We are having one worship service at 9.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We'll be doing lessons and carols, so we'll get to sing all of our favorite Christmas music all day. And yes, you're allowed to wear your Christmas pajamas if you want to come celebrate with us that morning. We're going to be a little more casual and uh, even more casual. Uh, you're always welcome to come in your pajamas as long as you know they're church appropriate, I guess, uh, however you define that. And then we're also having... Uh, one worship service on New Year's Day at 9.30 in the morning. So that'll be two Sundays in the row that we're gathering at 9.30. And this is to allow our, our staff um, to be able to worship with their families and to accommodate those who are traveling for the Christmas season. But we invite you to come or to join us online if you are traveling for the Christmas season. Our Christmas Eve service, our Christmas Day service, our New Year's Day service will be live streamed just like our normal services. So you'll be able to join us in worship from wherever you are and we encourage you to do that. And now I wanna invite you to take a big deep breath and to come with me into a time of centering as we prepare to do the work that we are called here to do this day. Will you join me in a word of prayer? God, we know that your Holy Spirit has been with us this whole time. 
that your Holy Spirit has been going before us our entire lives, that you have been preparing us for this moment. And we ask, God, that our hearts and minds would be open, that we would be expectant, that you have something for us this day, and that we would be ready to receive what you have. It's in Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. 
Let's, uh, let's all stand together and join in our opening prayer. O oh, gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. worship over to Carrie for Youngest Disciples. Good morning. Good morning. How are you girls? Good. Good. Tired. You're tired. Oh, you're always tired. But you, you say that you're tired, but then you burst out of here like a crazy lady. So I'm tired. you're tired too? Yeah, it was a busy Saturday. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I was busy too. It's hard to root on a, a football team when you're just listening on an app. That's what I did yesterday afternoon. It wasn't the Huskers either. <laughs> you like the Huskers? Good. You also like the Chiefs? Yeah. One team is definitely better than the other, huh? <laughs> but that's another conversation. Anyway, so I went yesterday and had coffee with my mom at Urban Abbey. Um, and if you and you said that you hadn't been there, right? Have you ever been there, Marley, to Urban Abbey? No. You've been there. Well, if you haven't been there, it is a coffee shop, bookstore. A little bit of everything. Um, and we just happened to pick that place because we hadn't been over there for quite a while. Um, and it was 
amazing. The ukulele choir, or not choir, <laughs> the ukulele group was playing um, yesterday, so we got to participate and, and hear them sing and play the ukulele, so that was really cool. Um, and then my mom said, do you want to look around? And I said, no, because I always buy stuff when I'm there. And I told myself I wasn't going to buy any books because I have millions of books. But then I found this book and I fell in love with it. Um, so I bought it. And it's called, it has a lot of hearts in it, right? Yeah, I read it. Yeah, we can take turns. Um, it's called Love You by Heart, and it's by Peter H. Reynolds, and I have a bunch of books already by him, so I know he's a really good author. And when I started to read this book, I was like, this is exactly what God's love is. And so I had to buy it and share it with you guys, okay? Are we, you want to take turns reading? Yeah? Sure. sure, okay. All right, so it says Love You by Heart. I loved you by heart even before I met you. I loved you always. I've always loved you. <laughs> I love every morsel of your being. It's a pretty heart. I love every smile, every blink. I love you by heart. I love your toes, your head, your nose. I love you by heart. I l yes, you can do this one. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Plays over and over my head. You are my song. Good job. I love everything about you. I love all your ways. I love all your days, your good days, your blue days. Your funny days, your grumpy days. Your rainbow days, I love everything about you. I love you. I love how you make me a, make me smile, make me laugh, make me swoon. swoon. I love you by heart. I love everything about you, your triumphs and joys, fumbles and falls. I'll take it all. I love you in the morning. I love you all day. I love you in the evening. I love you in my dreams. I love your voice, your stories, your yawn, your sleeping purr. <laughs> I love you always. I love you, always have, always will. I love you by heart. And then there's a note from the author on the back, and it says, unconditional love is rare. Cherish and savor it. How lucky are we to love and be loved? This, I feel like, is exactly what God's love is like, right? He loves the good, the bad, the you really loved it. Me too. I think this is probably one of my favorite books. Do you want to pray for us, Marley? Okay, you ready? Okay, nice and loud. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our world. Thank you for our world. And our children. And our children. Amen. Amen. Good job. As we come to our time of offering, I want to talk to you about some ways that the staff has done work to make this offering as accessible for all as possible. So if you look on the back of your bulletin, if you picked one up from the information desk this morning, not only will you see the text to give information that you see on the screen before you, but you can also find our QR code that will take you to that page. So today, when the ushers come around passing out the baskets, you can participate online by using this QR code. And if you're joining us, um, if you're joining us online, there are links available and you can also participate with text to give or PayPal. The other way I wanna lift up to you as a way to make this accessible is, if you're anything like me, uh, sometimes you forget to bring your checkbook with you and I don't always have cash. It seems like it's harder these days to get cash than it used to be. And so out on the information desk again, we have these blue forms. Uh, and these blue forms sign you up for ACH, which is an automatic donation process. Uh, and you can set it, it looks like you can set it for your check account. And I love this type of stuff. All my bills are automatic bill pay. And this, that's what this is. 
You can also do that online through the Text to Give app, but if you wanna go through your checking account, this is one of the ways that we give. And if you look in your newsletter uh, this week, you will hear a person, a young person in our church, uh, sharing her testimony of her giving online and how much she has appreciated having that just come out of her checking account from month to month. And so we wanna encourage you to to give as you feel called and as you feel comfortable to the church. And then also at this time of offering, we invite our ushers to come forward and we invite you all to receive the gift of our, of our music this morning, our organist's music this morning. Let's pray responsive, responsively the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Oh, prayer of dedication. Change in the worship order. All right, let's do the prayer of dedication. We present these gifts, O oh God, in the confidence that healing, hope, and wholeness will flourish through them and because of them. Amen. I was trying to give you all time to get the bells up in place. You may be seated. You may be seated. Before, so we're going to do our prayer time just a little bit differently because the bells have prepared a prayer piece for us this morning. So I'm going to share with you the prayer request that I know about. And then as you receive the gift of the bell piece, I pray that it will become part of your prayer time right now. And then as soon as they ring the last note, I'm going to begin our prayer time. I just wanted to explain that to you about, about how the next moments of worship are going to begin. I hope you've taken time to look at your newsletter and you see the prayer requests that we have in the newsletter. We wanna to continue to pray, especially for the family of Bill Phillips, 
uh, you know, you, some of you know too well uh, the journey of grief in this first year and heading right into the holiday season. We wanna pray for Melanie and her family. Her cousin Dan passed away on Sunday. His funeral was yesterday. And so we wanna pray for them again, a, a life lost far too soon, far too young. We pray for them as they mourn and grieve and celebrate and share memories. I wanna invite you to pray for Casey Hale. Casey had surgery last week and then she had some complications this weekend. So she is back in the hospital. We wanna pray for George and Shirley. George had a lot of treatments this week and he's just exhausted today. Um, for those of you who have walked through that journey of receiving treatment, we, you, you may know what that feeling is like. And so we wanna pray for both of them. Last or this weekend, there was a shooting in a nightclub in Colorado Springs. And the news of that grabbed me and I looked it up because I was curious. In the United States, in November, according to one website, there have been 28 mass shootings already. That doesn't include the other types of violence that people in the US are living with the domestic violence people experience, the fear that people experience. So when we come to prayer time and I pray for an end of violence, that's what I mean. It's not meant to be political. It's a longing for flourishing and, and people should get to go out and celebrate without fear of dying in the midst of their celebrations. We also wanna be praying for the people of Iran who continue to protest and experience um, violence from their police force over in that country. And we just pray again for the news of the world and our leaders. And now I do, I wanna invite you to receive the gift of this song, to center yourselves on the presence of God in this place. <laughs> and to allow your hearts and your spirits to speak to God in the place beyond words, where God's spirit allows us to speak to him. So let us pray.
God, we thank you for all the ways in which you have blessed us this day and this week. The blessings of being able to be here together, whether we hear physically or online, to be gathered with the body of Christ to worship your holy name. And as we gather, God, we're mindful of the things that pull us away from you the distractions, the to-do lists, the busyness of the season, the aches and pains in our bodies as we worship here today. We 
We turn this over to you, God, and we ask to be filled up with your Holy Spirit. That we would be fully present in this place. God, we pray for those who are hurting this morning. Those who are experiencing hunger, those who are unable to keep the heat on. Those relationships that are strained and stressed. Those bodies that are tired and hurting. those minds that are chaotic. Those who are fighting for freedom from addiction. We pray for those who carry fear with them. who exist in this world afraid of the violence that will be done against them, that may be done against them. Help us to be, help us to fight for being the type of place where people don't have to be afraid God, we pray for this, your world and her leaders. For the people whose powers and decisions affect so many. May their leaders, may our leaders be filled with wisdom and filled with your compassion. May their decisions be based on facts. May their decisions move us towards the flourishing of all people. God, we pray for this, your church, and the church universal. At all times and in all places, may we focus more on who we are and who we are called to be, rather than who we are not. May we not compare ourselves to one another, but rather focus on the mission that you have given us all to do. May we be light and love out in the world through our actions first and then our words. And God, as people interact with us as a church and as individuals. May they catch a glimpse of your grace and your glory and your love for them. And we thank you, God, for Jesus Christ, whose life and teaching show us what it means to be a follower of you in the world and whose death and resurrection make this moment possible, this prayer possible, this worship possible. 
And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and join in our centering hymn, Grace Alone. the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. This is a story of hope. This is a story of peace. This is a story of liberation. Listen for the story of life. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 through 7, and I will be reading from the Common English Bible. Brothers and sisters, we want to let you know about the grace of God that was given to the churches of Macedonia. While they were being tested by many problems, their extra amount of happiness and their extreme poverty resulted in a surplus of rich generosity. I assure you that they gave what they could afford and even more than they could afford, and they did it voluntarily. They urgently begged us for the privilege of sharing in the service for the saints. They even exceeded our expectations because they gave themselves to the Lord first and to us, consistent with God's will. 
As a result, we challenge Titus to finish this work of grace with you the way he had started it. Be the best in this work of grace in the same way that you are the best in everything, such as faith, speech, knowledge, total commitment, and the love we inspired in you. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. I love solving problems in my life. I love coming up with creative solutions for things. It's one of the things that I enjoy with, Enjoy is, is coming up with an answer to a problem. But sometimes when I'm stressed or overwhelmed, and maybe you can relate to this, I solve my problems by spending money on something. Have you ever done that? And, and the other problem is like because I spend time on Facebook and TikTok, sometimes an advertisement convinces me to spend money to solve a problem I didn't even know I had, right? You know, I watch the advertisement and I'm like, oh yeah, that is a problem. I should buy that product. The problem with it is the worst part of it is not that there's any, any problem with buying things to solve a problem, is that sometimes it, it doesn't actually work out that way. How many of you, if, if you're a, a book lover like I am, how many books do you have at home that you haven't read yet? Right? Don't ask me about mine. I'm not ready to confess that much to you. Or, or I have a product that I thought, oh, I'll use this to teach my kids how to fold clothes. <laughs> that never happened. Right? And so now, instead of solving a problem that I had in my life with this product I bought, now I just have another problem because now I got to figure out where to put the product I bought and to store it or how to get rid of it, right? How to donate it or recycle it. Did you know? Did you know? We found this out. Uh, the ad board met with a man from Horizon Stewardship, and he told us that most Americans live at 120% of their income. 120% of their income. Now, now that math ain't mathin', right? Right? That's not a sustainable way of functioning in the world. But so many of us do it, and we might be surprised at who does it at who lives at 120% of their income. We might not recognize them when we meet them on the streets, right? Because they're, do you remember that old commercial? This just popped into my head. It's the dude with like the huge house and the white picket fence, and he's riding around on a riding lawnmower, and he's talking about how great his life is, and then he's like, and I'm drowning in debt. Somebody help me, please. I think it was like a credit card commercial, which I found deeply ironic that the credit card was gonna help with your debt. But anyways, that should tell you how old I am, because I remember when that came out, we all thought it was funny. A lot of Americans are living at 120% of their income, spending money they don't have to spend. And I would be willing to bet that most people who are living that way, they're not spending money on stuff they need. Right, they're spending money on the thing that's gonna solve whatever problem they've identified. Right? Or that the advertisements have helped them identify. I didn't even know that was a problem. Sure, I should buy that product. It's too easy. Paul is writing what we think is a letter, a fundraising letter to the Corinthian church. There are some scholars who believe that, that because Paul hasn't talked about fundraising before this letter, that this is actually a separate letter that was just added together into the Corinthian, into the second letter of Corinthians, right? That chapter 8 and chapter 9 are two fundraising letters. And when I read that, it cracked me up because we just got done with our stewardship campaign, and I am wondering how that would have gone over if one of the letters y'all would have got was Broadway. Let me tell you about Salem United Methodist Church and how much money they gave, right? Does this seem like an effective fundraising strategy to you? No, right? Except, I'm not gonna do this as a fundraising strategy, except in Paul's case, I love what Paul does. Paul talks about the, ex the grace that the Macedonians experienced because of their generosity. It's almost as if what Paul is talking about is not a dollar amount, but giving 
to the point that the Corinthians would experience the same grace that the Macedonians experienced in their generosity. And imagine what it takes for people, we know that at the time, or we guess that at the time, there's a couple times where uh, Macedonia went through seasons of drought and famine, and it kind of sounds like that's the season that they're in. And I love what Paul said about they begged to be part of the giving to the greater mission of the church. As far as we can tell, Paul discouraged them to participate in the giving because they were so poor, but they didn't want to miss out on this grace that God had for them. Now, the thing that our, our, um, the person who prepared our sermon series did is he stopped the reading too soon. Because we miss the why. And so I want to keep reading for you. I'm not giving an order, but mentioning the commitment of others. I'm trying to prove the authenticity of your love also. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although he was rich, he became poor for our sakes. So that you could become rich through his poverty. The grace that the Macedonians experience through their generosity, and the grace that Paul is attempting to invite the Corinthians to experience is based on the sacrifice and generosity of Jesus Christ. I told you at the start of worship that today is Christ the King Sunday. Didn't I? That's not language that we use a lot here in the U.S. When we talk about kings and queens and monarchy, it's because we're we're usually watching what's happening in the United Kingdom unfold, right? That's usually the kings and queens that we're paying attention to here in the U.S., and they don't really have any authority over us anymore, but we're still kind of fascinated by them. And there are a lot of people who are in the church, uh, scholars, I'll, I'll say, scholars and pastors and students in seminary that think we should get rid of king language for Jesus, that we should quit using this language because it's wrapped up in all this complicated stuff in the world, right? Kings and queens have not always been the nicest people. They have not always been the kindest people to the people that they're supposed to rule over. Can we agree on that, right? We're a nation that decided we didn't like the king, and so we bucked off his authority. So we can agree that kings and queens are not always the people that we wanna follow, and so people think, oh, we should just get rid of this king language. Except, except that when we put king language next to Jesus, we get a new definition of the word king, right? Rather than a new definition of the word Jesus. And so Jesus is the king who comes not with authority and command, not under pomp and celebration, not in demanding that we give him more money. Jesus comes sacrificing himself for our sake. Jesus changes what it means to be king. And because of Jesus' generosity and generous example, Paul is calling the churches to be generous themselves. Generosity is one of the few things in the Bible, there's probably a couple, but I would say it's one of the few things that is both a spiritual discipline and a spiritual gift. It is both a spiritual discipline and a spiritual gift. A spiritual discipline are those things that we do not to earn our way into heaven, but to position ourselves to receive grace. How many of you are sports fans? Any kind of sport. I don't, I don't care what it is, right? You have to move your, if your sport involves some kind of projectile, ball, puck, right? You have to move your body to receive the projectile or to block the projectile. Can we agree on that? Do I understand my sports ball rules enough, right? I had to teach my son that he wasn't scoring goals in basketball, so I do know that. We talked about what he could call it besides that. But we move our bodies, right? That's a spiritual discipline. A spiritual discipline is not earning something. It's positioning ourselves to receive the grace of God. 
That's what it is. Does that make sense? And the grace comes as a free gift to us. So generosity as a spiritual discipline is a choice that we have to make because budgeting and the way we spend our money is an exer- it's a discipline, right? If we don't want to live at 120% of our income, sometimes we have to say no to buying that thing, right? To stay within a budget. I hope some of you have a budget. Um, we're, we're getting there. Mark and I are still learning how to budget, but we're getting there. Actually, we're, we're still just remembering to bring our receipts home so we can tell somebody how much we spent before the credit card statement shows up. But generosity positions us to receive the grace that God has for us. By living at or below our means so that we can be generous with our money, we can more acutely experience what Jesus did for us on the cross. By making our own sacrifices, we position ourselves to more acutely experience what Jesus did for us on the cross. It's a spiritual discipline that opens us up to the grace of Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual gift in that some of us are enabled to really, all of us, I'll just say all of us, all of us are enabled to dramatically change lives through what we have to offer. The spiritual gifts, if you remember, by Paul and from Jesus are meant for the building up of the body of Christ. They're meant for the equipping of the saints. Now we're told that what the Macedonian church and the Corinthian church is, this collection is for the poor in Jerusalem. So they are sending their gifts to the Jerusalem church in order to support the ministry that's happening there. They are building up the body of Christ. And so generosity becomes a spiritual gift in which they participate in the mission and ministry that God has for the church. Now let me give you the really good news. Psychology has confirmed that this works that this stuff works. There are two kinds of happiness. Did you know that? Did any of you know that? Did some of you know that? There are two kinds of happiness. There's hedonic happiness. Anybody ever been called a hedon? You don't have to tell me if you have, it's okay. But it is a type of happiness. It's a sense of well-being. It's a sense that life is going exactly the way you want it to go. This is the idea of happiness that most people struggle with, right? Because we live in a world of keeping up with the Joneses. I don't care how old you are, this has always been a problem in the U.S., right? Keeping up with the Joneses. Someone's got it better than me, so my life must not be going that well. This is called hedonic happiness. If we're generally happy, that day-to-day happiness, if we're generally content with how life is going, we have this sense of happiness, but it's a roller coaster. And it's all about context and perspective. There's another type of happiness called (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong, eudaimonic happiness. Eudaimonic happiness. This comes from a sense of purpose, a sense of living according to one's values, a sense of being connected to something greater than yourself. This is a type of happiness that cannot be shaken by what's happening in your day-to-day life. And this is the sense of happiness and joy that I think Paul is talking about when he says the combination of the Macedonian church was extreme happiness and extreme poverty. Those things don't go together if we stop at hedonic happiness, do we? Do they? But to experience something that says there's something happening in my life that is greater than me, that is according to my purpose, that is according to the values I've stated that I have, And I'm using whatever financial gifts I can to participate in that. See, here's the the shadow part of using money to solve problems that we know we have or problems that we were convinced by an advertisement that we think we have, is that it never actually solves the problem, does it? It never, maybe it makes your shelves a little more organized 
or maybe it makes your skin feel a little more moisturized in the winter. But it doesn't last. It doesn't last because what we're actually searching for is that eudaimonic happiness. The happiness that means we're living according to our values. That we're participating in something greater than ourselves. We are wired. We've been talking about our spiritual DNA. We are wired to be generous. There's a reason almost every major religion talks about giving money to the poor. It's not just because we believe the poor should have food and heat and housing. We do believe that. But we as human beings are wired in our core to be generous to one another. To be generous to something greater than ourselves. And it is my prayer that as we enter this season where we celebrate generosity, that we would find ways to live more generous lives throughout the year, that we would stop and think about that money we're about to spend and say, is this really where I want it to go? Is this really where I want it to go? Or is there somewhere else that I could use these funds that would give me joy that lasts beyond my external circumstances, that would allow me to more fully experience the grace of God? Amen? Amen. We want to affirm our belief in God and Jesus Christ as a community. And even if you struggle with any one of these sentences at any given time, that's okay. Someone else in this room believes. And it's good to know and to affirm our traditional foundation as a church. And so I'd like to invite you to join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. The words will be available on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's rise and sing our closing hymn. Freely, freely. forgave my sin in Jesus name I've been born again in Jesus name and in Jesus name I come to you to share his love as he told me to
because you believe others will know that I live. Beloved, my prayer for all of us is that we would position ourselves to receive the grace that God so longs to give to us and that we would be generous with the grace that God longs to do through us. In the name and power of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm.